So now we're getting into to 2 Timothy, Paul's second letter. Um, remember, 1 Timothy concentrated on the, the proper conduct of those who preach the gospel and the need for proper organization and conduct within the local church. And it also warned against the destructive work of false teachers while stressing the importance of, of promoting sound doctrine. And now we get into Second Timothy. Of course, there's our library again. And we come to the origin of, of Second Timothy. And the title, as we look at that for a minute, um, in Second Timothy now here, Paul is really concentrating now on the hardships okay and the work of those that that preach the gospel and the need for them to faithfully persevere to the very end okay it's uh you know sometimes it's it's not right of us but we apply pressure to the preacher we we watch them and see how they act. And Paul stresses the importance of the Word of God to Timothy. And he warns Timothy against those who would mishandle and depart from it. And I think maybe at this time, I'm not sure, Timothy might have been laboring in Ephesus at this time um, as an evangelist. And, but, but Paul wants him to leave at the end of the book. Because, right. Yeah, so. well, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, it was kind of a shame, but this is an overview study. But I thought, if you read Second Timothy completely from the beginning, read the whole letter, um, you can't help but be amazed, almost brought to tears, about this man of Paul and what he thought of Timothy, and what he thought of his life, what he endured. Um, I read it before I started the lesson, um, and it, it just amazed me. I thought, what a man Paul was. You know, we, you know, we don't like to raise people up on pedestals, and uh, the world does that, makes them a saint. Um, but, on the other hand, too, we need to pay a lot of respect and understanding to what Paul endured. And in this letter, um, we see his love for God, we see his love for his nation, um, and we see his love for Timothy. And it, it wasn't an artificial love, neither. It, it was pure. It was righteous. Um, but uh, we studied in 1 Timothy extensively, if you remember, on the roles of the men and women in, in public worship. And by the order of God, we learned that women are to be under submission to men in the leadership roles of the church. So as not to discourage them, but encourage them in their respective roles, Paul says something in the first chapter of 2 Timothy in verse 5 that I thought I'd mentioned before we get moving on. But he says uh, in verse 4, Longing to see thee, that's Timothy, remembering thy tears, that I may be filled with joy, having been reminded of the unfined faith that is in thee. Where did he get that faith, Timothy? Which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded in thee also. Timothy's mother was Jewish, okay? 
And she was married to a Gentile. And according to Acts 16, Timothy was not circumcised. And it seems then um, to me that her father nor her husband were very observant of, of Judaism and by leaving Timothy uncircumcised. But Eunice, we read here, Eunice was observant because Paul praises her for her genuine faith and what she shared with her mother Lois and then Eunice imparted that faith to her son. And Timothy, and more than anyone else, is, is what Eunice did. And she equipped him for a lifetime of usefulness for God. And, and Paul is praising her for that. And Eunice should be, I believe, an encouragement for every woman that is, is faced with the the daunting task of nurturing um, the spiritual life of their children. Um, you know, d don't underestimate your power. And especially if, by thinking of Eunice, if you can't count on the help of a strong male in your home, then you need to do it yourself. And Eunice, I believe, offers hope to mothers today that it can be done um, and ladies should never underestimate the inherent power of, of being a mother you know we know uh, as sons um, we remember the love and respect that we have for our mothers and you need not forget that nor the power of a loving God who will enable you and, and strengthen you and, and help you. So I just thought I'd, I'd mention that because it seemed, I found it interesting that Paul mentions mom again in this, uh, in this book. But we'll move along then uh, to the author and our question again with every book is, how do the following passages provide confirmation and support of Paul as the author of 2 Timothy? And so 2 Timothy 1 and verse 1, uh, I think we were at Jeff, were we? Okay, you can you read that please? Uh, yeah. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Okay, so how does this verse help confirm um, that Paul is the writer? Says Paul. The, the which? He says his name. Right, right. That's Gord's line. He always <laughs> makes that personal claim, doesn't he? I, Paul. Who would we think wrote it? Um, but there's something I notice. Um, if you remember in 1 Timothy 1 and 1, he began with uh, according to the commandment of God. But here he begins with uh, by saying through the will of God. As I thought about that, um, and he says through the will of God according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus which makes us understand, I believe, that because he's writing this to Timothy, remember? And, and Timothy is a preacher. He reminds Timothy that with the promise of life, okay, life eternal, goes the provision for its proclamation. Doesn't it? I thought that, that's really a point for all of us, but thinking of Timothy, this is your job, Timothy. Um, you are now not being an elder, but you are leading a flock. You're teaching a flock. How many 
maybe in Ephesus at this time, how many um, members might be new converts, might have just came out of idolatry months before. And, and now Timothy's being charged with, okay, you need to teach these people, you need to direct them. Um, so, uh, moving on then, uh, 2 Timothy 3, verses 10 and 11. Uh, Tammy, please. Do you carefully follow my doctrine, standard life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Christopher? What persecutions have I endured? And out of them, all the Lord delivered me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what uh, what evidence do we take here uh, in support of Paul being the author? Go to Acts and figure out yeah. all of these things actually happened to Paul. Right. In, I think it's chapter 14, when he first comes it through there. And, and uh, 13 or 14, when he first comes through there, he faces all these things. He's kicked out of Antioch and yep. and uh, and uh, had to come to Iconium and Derby and kicked out of there too. It, exactly, Jerry. That's all you have to do. Paul re, um, speaks of his past persecutions, all his afflictions, and Timothy <clears throat> would have been maybe following Paul, or at least heard of Paul's preaching, I'm sure of that, and his persecutions. He may not have, have been an associate with Paul at that time, but I believe he was a disciple. He met him, he met Paul, and uh, for us, all we have to do is, Jerry says, read the book of Acts. There's a second trip that, that uh, through when Paul came in Acts 15 and 16, that he picked of Timothy on this, on that trip. Right, right. But I'm sure Timothy probably heard of him yeah. before that. Um, Paul was, lots knew Paul. Certainly the false teachers um, knew him. And now, uh, first Ti or Second Timothy 4, verses 10 to 12, um, Victoria, do you want to read that? Um, 2 Timothy 4, verses 10 and 12. For Demas, on the Lord Jesus, this friend of God, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Christians have gone to Jerusalem, Titus to Dalmatia. Okay, and uh, I forgot these had all the names in them, but we just get through it as best we can. Um, and 19 to verse 20. Um, Barbara, do you want to read that? Verse 19 and 20? Okay, thank you. Um, what stands out in these verses that proves to us that Paul was the the writer? But Jeff? Just that Jesus had witnesses. Right. The things that he did, the disciples had 
apostles had witnesses for things that they were broke. So he names those witnesses. Exactly. All these names we've read and and heard and know all through the book of Acts. Uh, Demas, um, Demas is spoken of, of by Paul as a trusted worker in the gospel in, in Colossians 4 and 14 and in Philippians. Um, his motive uh, in leaving Paul, sometimes careful how I judge Demas, uh, I kind of don't know whether we can say he completely lost his faith because I was wondering if maybe he was not willing to endure the hardships of, of traveling with Paul as an evangelist. Um, you know, it just it seems to me Paul's whole thought in Timothy is encouraging Timothy, strengthening him. You're going to suffer. Okay, maybe Demas wasn't willing um, to do that. Um, as opposed to forsaking his faith completely. He had Don't much you? harder, harsher words for Hymenaeus and Philetus yes. than he did for Timothy in this book. Right. And so, like, as far as I, I, I'm sort of in agreement what what is Paul saying? He, well, he's, he's not here. That, like, when Mark abandoned them in Acts right. 14, Paul was just as equally disappointed didn't mean Mark did like that left the faith at back here. We know he didn't, but but uh, it, at the very least, he disappointed Paul. Right, right, and I'm sure you know preaching at that time demanded a lot of hardships, um, not only in contending for the truth, but also in travel. Uh, you know, moving around. Maybe Demas didn't want to do that, um, you know. But uh, Crescens, we only read of, of him here, but we, we know that Paul knew Titus. Because um, the next letter we study, Paul wrote to Titus. So, and we know Paul knew Priscilla and Aquila. He meant that, met them in Corinth, um, Onis, Onisiphorus was from Ephesus, we, we've read of him, uh, Trophimus, he was a member at Ephesus, if you remember, and he traveled with Paul to Jerusalem. So it's pretty hard to say that Paul was not the author with this kind of evidence. Jerry? If Timothy was in Ephesus when Paul wrote this book, it does tell us that Paul sent someone to Ephesus to replace him. Uh, like as far right. as he said, uh, who was it that he sent to Ephesus? Um, whichever one it was in there. Tychicus? Yeah, he sent to Ephesus. So if Timothy was there, Ephesus wasn't going to go without someone to teach them. Right. Uh, and so Paul's looking out for the brethren in places. Yeah. And so that shows that Paul always was concerned with, with the brethren and their growth. And so even that can show us that all right, the man's attitude here matches Paul. Yes, exactly. And we'll look at this a little later on, but I mean, in these verses that we just read, um, we, we see a true love and concern. Um, Paul's in a cold, damp prison cell here now. And it impressed on me that... Um, he wasn't worried about himself and, and his trials, his distress at the moment. He's worried about everyone else and worried about Timothy and reminding Timothy, um, you know, that now it's your turn to, to carry the torch, if you will. Um, so he's making every effort to, to encourage Timothy. Um, and we get into those thoughts uh, in a second here. Um, under the date, our, our question is, how are Paul's circumstances at the time of writing Second Timothy 
different from those at the time of the writing of First Timothy? And what are the apostles' expectations for the future at this time? So we go to chapter 2, chapter 2, and we'll look at verses 8 and 9, first of all. Um, Lista, do you want to read them, please? I got, I got the nod. <laughs> I'm thankful for those nods because um, my hearing is not the best. But Timothy uh, is commanded here by Paul to remember who? First and utmost. Who's he? What's the first name in, in verse 8? Right, right, Kala. Mm -hmm. Utmost, remember Christ himself. He reminds them that, first off, Jesus was of the seed of David. So that emphasizes Christ's humanity. Okay, and then he says, was raised from the dead. Um, why would Timothy need to know that? Well, it emphasizes that he is living now, okay? And he's seated at the right hand of God. And remember, Timothy's being charged with preaching Christ, preaching and offering us a hope. And if we've been living at that time, he was striving to bring us out of Judaism. And where better to start? then with Christ, um, as we're reminded, the seed of David, um, that he was a Jew, and now the fact of his resurrection. And the point gathered, there's, there's another point that jumped out here at me, is that suffering will come before victory. And, I, and that came from the thought of being reminded of Jesus. Jesus was victorious over the grave, which offers us victory, okay, to faithfulness. But none of that came, did it, till after the suffering. And maybe Timothy needed to be reminded of that, Jim. And that goes to Paul, you said encouraging Timothy, recognizing yeah. that He's going through chains. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, that was certain. That happened, and that provided hope. But he was suffering, and don't be ashamed of him for suffering, and you might suffer. And and uh, and so that goes with, in going back to the question, Paul appears to be in prison where he wasn't in 1 Timothy. Uh, and, right. sorry, and I think if we look at the dates... I don't think Paul was in prison, or at least he'd been released from prison the first time. Right. And now he's in prison again. Uh, yes. Yeah, and first Timothy Timothy, at least he left us thinking he's gonna be released. Yeah. Doesn't it? But it now it seems here like with the words being in bonds that Paul's words now are are more severe. To Timothy in a way, because um, like Jer said, remember in First Timothy he was, he was under house arrest uh, with some freedom, and the, he had the future hope of being uh, released. But but now it seems that that Paul is aware that his martyrdom, his death, is is approaching, um, and it seems that he's giving Timothy a a final charge here uh, to fulfill his ministry and remembering Christ 
would enable him uh, to endure the trials and the persecutions of teaching. Carla? So there is a verse I can't quote it, but those who live godly in Christ Jesus shall <laughs> suffer persecution. And it is imperative that he tells Timothy all these things. And, and, and for example, when we are teaching or even trying to encourage someone for something, you would want to go and tell of your personal experiences, even though you may not tell other people what you went through, but having told people things that pertain to them to be encouraged, it's, it's a good thing. And he put Paul as left anything out right. so it which is for this young guy's um, encouragement and to persevere in the, Christ Jesus. Exactly. That's a good point. Um, I'll touch on that thought. Uh, I had some thoughts on that. Maybe it was later on in the lesson, but that is a good point. Um, yeah, Paul held nothing back, did he? Um, left no one wondering why his faith um, and especially with Timothy as you say he's uh, he's going to endure trials um, and preaching to others uh, chapter 4 verse 6 and 8 um, reminded me if thou speaking to Timothy if thou put the brethren in mind of these things Thou shalt be a good minister of Christ Jesus, um, nourished in the words of the faith and of the good doctrine which thou hast followed until now. Um, but refuse profane and old wives' fables. Exercise thyself unto godliness, for bodily exercise is profitable for a little, uh, but godliness is profitable for all things having promise of the life which now is and of that which is to come. And um, again, those verses, um, when you picture Paul here, like he, he's almost certain he's going to die. He's, he's stuck in a, a prison cell, um, which made me kind of remind myself, sometimes we, we need to be careful we think because we're faithful and we're Christians that things are going to just be all right. There's not going to be problems. Um, but that's not the way it is, is it? Um, I mean, Kali just spoke about that. Um, and Paul's telling Timothy here, don't be under the illusion. Um, you know, if we step up to our day and age, don't be uh, fooled by our TV evangelists. <laughs> That's, you know, they're not teaching the truth. They're teaching what people want to hear, so they don't have problems. There's no trials to them. But if you're going to stand for the Word of God, then you're going to have trials. Jeff? If you look at First Timothy as a, as a letter of the conduct of the church, everyone taking their respective roles uh, and doing those things faithfully. And we can look at 2 Timothy as a letter about counting the cost of being faithful to the end. Right. Uh, enduring all those things that, they, that are instructed in 1 Timothy, uh, but understanding the cost of those things and continuing in the faithful until death. It, exactly. Yeah. I, I read a writer once said that it is the end that crowns the work. And and that's kind of struck me that, no, let's not think that we're not going to endure hardship. Because I think if we don't endure hardship, then there's something wrong. There's a problem somewhere. Is it on us? I'm not ashamed to own my Lord, nor to defend.